Hi, and welcome to the Journey to Happy podcast. This is a podcast about self-introspection, self-growth, mindfulness, life coaching, and all things related to the mind as we become the CEO of our own life. That's right. In here, we all become promoted to CEOs. Join me for weekly episodes on mindset tips, motivational stories, and of course, mindfulness-based tools that will help us grow our confidence, grow our compassion, our zen, and our focus. I am a recovered self-sabotager, a recovered anxiety junkie, and I can promise you that in here, I am devoting all of my best mindset tips and shifts to help you get rid of all the elements of your mind that come to stand on the way of you and happiness, you and your full potential. So I am so excited that we're connecting. I am Olga. I am a retired social worker and now life coach, a mindset coach, a wife, blissfully a mother, and I am also your host. Thanks for joining me. See you inside. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Journey to Happy Podcast. I'm Olga, your host, and uh, as always, I'm just so happy to be checking in with you guys on this Monday. I would love to begin by thanking Laura, a listener to this podcast, who took the time to write to me after listening to one of my podcasts. And this is what she had to say I, I wanted to share with everybody. Hi, Olga. I'm one of your biggest fans. I just listened to your podcast, What I Learned from 2020. This resonates so much with me, particularly the parts about deciding for yourself and the impact from walking outdoors. I walk every day and I always feel better after spending time outdoors. This is also a great time for creativity. Actually, my best ideas come to me when I walk. Keep doing what you're doing, spreading your wonderful message and advice. You are making a huge difference and having an impact on many women. Thank you for being who you are. Laura, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to write to me. I absolutely love to hear from you guys. It's Ah, it just just makes it be uh, more special. I put so much time and effort to create podcasts that are helpful to you. And it's exciting when I get to hear back from you because I get to see what what works for you, what you guys want to hear, what you find helpful. So I appreciate you. And because you reach out to me, I'm going to gift you a free pass to my Detox the Mind online course, which is worth over $1,000, but is uh, actually sold at $299. And it's entirely free for you for giving us, for reaching out to me. And for all of you listening, I will be selecting people randomly like this to give them a kind of service that I offer when you leave me a review. It's so appreciated that you review the podcast and you tell me what you like, what you want to hear more from. Okay, I just have to tell you, I've had a couple of weeks full of emotions. So many things are happening. And one of the things, very significant things that has happened in my personal life is that uh, my husband and I have decided that we're going to try to look for baby number two, but for those of you who are brand new to my podcast, if you've never heard about, if you've never heard me talk about this, I have unexplained infertility. So does my husband, and it took us five years to conceive our son, who's now a year and a half old, and he came out of uh, our fourth round of IVF. So this is not a light decision to make. We know we know what's ahead is difficult. My chances are even now more more diminished than two years ago when we met, met made Mateo, only because hello, I'm aging, and uh, yeah, that makes things a little bit more complicated. Nonetheless, are not impossible. I will do a whole episode on this. I promise. 
this is not what this episode is all about, but I wanted to just share with you kind of like what has been happening in my life. And the reason I bring this up is because I do feel February was such an emotional month for many, many reasons. And I don't think that I am alone. I think that many of my clients were feeling um, very strong emotions of progress, of um, dreams coming true or setting goals that are really high up, but they really wanted to be clear that they were going to get it. And I'm just stepping into the same power. I wholeheartedly believe that we can have it all. And the only limitations that we have from having it all are created with our own mind. And so not only do I coach women on this, but I find I find it so fascinating and I'm so passionate about this subject that I am actually walking the steps myself. I am stepping into this energy of I can have it all and attempting to have another baby is part of me stepping into this energy. Last week, I was asked to speak to a group of women who belong to beach body. So they're either coaches or they're members like myself who are, who are you know moving through the different programs of beach body and I was asked to speak uh, at this group because they were doing a whole um, I guess campaign on women loving themselves more. And they asked me to speak about whatever I wanted and I chose this one subject that brought so many great conversations that I decided to bring it into the podcast. And that is imperfect is the new perfect. I have spoken about this before, how to ditch the perfectionist mindset. This is what I coach women. I would say, honestly, 90% of my work with women is about letting go of the perfectionist mindset. And I feel passionate about this because as a retired perfectionist in some areas of my life, I notice how much more freedom, how much more joy, how much space there is now in my mind and in my everyday, now that I don't care to be perfect. And I'm just going to say, I was listening this weekend to Joe Rogan's podcast, and he had this podcast, he was interviewing uh, Elon Musk and they were talking about the Tesla car and how it drives itself. It's completely self-sufficient. The driver can literally just like sit and just watch the car go. And so Joe Rogan asked him, like, isn't that scary? Like, can the car not make mistakes? And the answer was awesome. I love that because this is so real. He said, Any human input is opening the space for error. Oh my God. I I just, I love that answer because it is a recognition that humans are by nature imperfect. So why is it that we keep pretending or what, not pretending, we all walk around saying I'm not perfect that we got down path. But what I find fascinating is that even though we have that concept that like, yes, I mean, perfect. Nobody's perfect. Like I literally have heard all of my clients say these words. They also hold the belief that they must be perfect in order to be loved, to be accepted, to, to be happy. And so I find it so fascinating that we can have both of those beliefs within our our same mindset. And so I am here to remind you that being human means we're imperfect. And being human means we are in a learning process. Like even in the same interview, I mean, how intelligent, how intelligent is this man? We would all say he's so intelligent. And Joe Rogan asked him something that I can't remember exactly what 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 the question was, but his answer was, well, if I had figured it all out, if I had learned everything that there, there was to learn, I wouldn't be alive anymore. And that is also something that I believe. So there you go. I am not building Teslas. 
or going into Mars, but I so, so, so relate with what he was saying. And I'm excited to be talking to you about really detoxifying the mind from this perfectionist mindset and this striving for perfectionism. So as a mindset coach, as a therapist, as a wife, as a mom, as a human, I get it. I get the concept of wanting to be perfect. But I also get the downsides of that lifestyle because it becomes a lifestyle. So you're probably wondering, why do I care for people to stop trying to be perfect? Why would I want you to detoxify your mind from perfectionism? (sighs) Why detox from something that makes us want to strive for better. Maybe some of you think that. A lot of my clients say that, but but isn't this good? Hasn't this been serving me? Like, I don't think I'll be promoted if I wasn't trying for perfect. I don't, be, I don't think I'll be racing 20, um, I don't know how many marathons if, if, I didn't, if I didn't strive for perfect or improving my timing of running. And I would say this to all of you who think attempting to be a perfectionist it's it's a good it's how you improve when you are attempting to to strive for perfect you are no longer trying to be better you are trying to become enough so for us on uh, on this journey to becoming perfect what we're actually doing is devaluating who we are right at this moment and that brings <laughs> a long list of issues that bring us to human suffering, to not loving ourselves, to not being confident, to feeling that anything and everything we've got is just not good enough or not enough. I want to share with you that I am an overachiever. My biggest drive in life is that one more thing, that, that you know, climbing that mountain that is a bit higher, hence IVF number five. That, that is just my drive. My drive is to tr- attempt to do things that somebody told me I couldn't or that I see as difficult. I, I just love doing difficult things, okay? It grows my confidence. It grows my, my, my sense of purpose, my determination, my decision-making. I love doing things that are difficult. But, but me doing things that are difficult does not equal me trying to be perfect, very different two things. So as an overachiever, somebody who loves improving, who loves just walking the extra mile, I'm telling you, it is possible to make strides towards getting to a, a, um, a goal while not trying to be perfect. Like I am the least perfectionist human you will ever meet at this point in time, even though that wasn't always the case. So why would I ask you to detoxify the mind from something that is apparently so positive? Why? You know, I remember even my dad saying to me when I started like looking for jobs because my dad was, I mean, he hired so many people throughout his profession. Uh, he sat at so many interviews. His advice was, Olga, if they ask you what are your weaknesses, make sure you say you're a perfectionist. Every employer wants to know their employees are perfectionists because they're going to be paying so much more attention to details. They're going to be willing to walk the extra mile. So deep in my brain, I've, I've had this thought that being a perfectionist is a good thing. I, I've mentioned this in past episodes. My mom is a perfectionist, and I saw my mom being so organized and so accomplished and getting things so well done, and her home is in, ma- in immaculate condition no matter what is happening. So I definitely grew up thinking, yeah, I want to strive for perfect. Perfect like seems to make life so much more organized. Uh, what I've realized is that perfectionism is equal to self-sabotage, and I will tell you why. Hi, friends. I'm interrupting you here briefly to invite you to join my Detox the Mind online course. This is a do-it-yourself course. It is the step-by-step of how to change your mind from habits that are super unhelpful, like self-sabotaging, like anxiety, like 
overthinking and just about any element inside your mind that you currently do by repetition. But there is a better way. You know there is a better way. You might not be interested in joining me yet in private coaching or joining a group coaching method. I get it. Maybe you just want to do this by yourself. This is your opportunity. Detox the Mind offers more than 12 weeks of content, step by step. It's me breaking down all of the steps that a person needs to take in order to really truly detoxify the mind from all those elements that end up feeling pretty heavy and discouraging without having to talk to somebody or having to share in a group. It will give you access though to a private Facebook group where from time to time I show up and do lives and answer questions that you can directly ask me from the course itself. What's in the course? A multitude of videos, more than 36 mini videos, as well as workbooks and checklists that help you stay on top of your progress. This course is currently for sale for $299 and it will be yours for life. So if this is something that speaks to you, if you're interested in creating new mental habits, in understanding the functioning of the mind so that you can play along the mind rules and actually get the results that you want, this course is for you. I really hope to see you in there. All the information is in the show notes. When we set our goal to be perfect, we, one, are beginning by stating also that means we're not enough, right? Because whoever, we, we think perfect is, is, is plenty, it's enough. So if we want to be that, that means that we are not at this moment enough. What happens to your heart, to your self-esteem, to your confidence, to your inner conversations when you hold the belief that you're not good enough? Oh, they're discouraging. So from that point, from that point, energy point, how do you, how do you start moving up? Oh, well, by bullying yourself, by treating yourself with a lot of disrespect, by taking energy out of you, by telling you horrible things about yourself. What? And this is why it's self-sabotage. So the self-sabotager in you loves it when you're attempting for perfect because you become weak, weak in spirit and in self-esteem and low confidence. So the self-sabotager is winning. <laughs> and you guys, we all have an active self-sabotager it's strong enough. We don't need to feed it. We don't need to make it win any, any of our battles at all. So perfectionism is the mother of all guilt. It's the never ending. I can do better. So each time you're doing something and for some reason you had a step back, you made a mistake, you had a learn, a, a learning moment, there shows up guilt. Uh, this isn't perfect. According to my books, perfect means 10 out of 10. And this is an eight or a seven or a five. So it completely takes away progress and it only focuses on making you feel bad about who you are and, and not celebrate your little progress because it's little. Perfectionism also is the mother of irrealistic expectations. Oh, as I was telling you, I was giving this talk to beach body people. I am a part of a, a Facebook page of other women who are encouraging each other. And nothing drives me more crazy, like nothing drives me more crazy than reading messages in there when people say, oh my God, I feel so bad. I had a guilty pleasure. I ate this. Like food is guilt inducing or the one that really annoys me. I had a cheat day or I cheated over the weekend. So I cannot, I don't, I don't know how much exercise I'm going to have to do the next day to compensate. Okay. <laughs> Just the word cheating when it comes to eating food drives me insane because what does cheating is, it actually means unfaithful. It means you did not keep up your word. It means you um, were dishonest. Guys, let's not embrace life with such a strict mindset that you 
stepping out of your diet, of your movement goal, of your anything makes you a cheater. Let's just like buy. That's what the perfectionist mind tells you. It's an old or nothing mentality. And so because we cannot keep all or nothing all of our life, there is so much gray, so much gray in our life in our life. We begin to feel cheaters, not enough, guilt, all these feelings that are in turn impacting the way we feel about ourselves. And so, you know, the the, the list, like the the the, the um, circle goes on and on and on. It's like a wheel that never stops turning. And so it makes us feel inadequate, not enough, unlovable. I have news for you. You're imperfect and lovable. <laughs> when my baby was born, that's exactly what I told him. I didn't say, oh, you're perfect. I, I'm so aware. I don't want to pass that on to him. I don't want him to strive for perfect. I don't want him to think I love him when he's perfect or because he's perfect. Even though between you and I, I wouldn't change a thing about this kid. I love him unconditionally. I also know that I would love him no matter what. That's just what a mom does. So I looked at my son and I told him, ah, oh, you're imperfect and so lovable. Yeah, a few people thought it was weird to be calling my baby imperfect. But that's the point. I want him to learn to love himself imperfect and all because he's human <laughs> so he is imperfect he hadn't done a thing he had just been born and he was already imperfect why because he came in a human form <laughs> so he's gonna be imperfect for the rest of his life and my love will never be conditioned to him being perfect and what i would hope for him as i hope for myself is to make that commitment to love himself like i love myself unconditionally imperfect and all because that's my human condition that's also your human condition whereas many of us and, and i used to be like this oh i will love myself once i am down two pounds once i am actually in serious relationship once i get this promotion and that comes across in many ways maybe you didn't have the conversation of i'll love myself once i lose 10 pounds but i think i'll feel better about my body and about shopping for new clothing once I get down to a size two, not before. Or I'll go out on that date once I am a size five, once I have figured out that I clear up my, my skin issue or whatever the case might be. How many of those conditions have you placed already? That is you striving for perfection and postponing the self-love and telling yourself whoever you are at this moment is not lovable because you're not good enough. So this type of thinking sets us up for failure. All or nothing can only be kept for so long. That is why we come in and out of the diet wagon, in and out of um, our habits to move, to eat clean, to take our vitamins, to not swear, to, I don't know, call the people we love and tell them we love them, to be courageous. That is why, because somehow we sabotage our ex human experience by attempting to be perfect, by wanting the all or nothing mindset. I will start practicing yoga once I am flexible. I laugh. You know how many times I've heard that? Guys, the whole purpose of practicing yoga is to become flexible. How on earth are you going to become flexible? Not attempting for flexibility. But that is the trap that we set our, our, ourselves for every single time. I'll start loving myself once we're in a relationship. How about you start loving yourself now, regardless of being or not in a relationship, because you are deserving of you. So I just, I would love for you to reflect on how perfectionism is showing up in your life. For me, when I notice that I, in fact, suffer from perfectionism, and I'm not the kind of person, and I've never been, who needs to have a perfect house? Okay, maybe I, I did at first, in my early 20s. But that kind of left. But I wanted to have a perfect marriage, where nobody fought, where nobody did anything sort of like unwanted. I became so, 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 so aware of my perfectionist mindset 
when I was trying to have a baby like every other human and I couldn't. And I was mad at my body for not doing the thing perfectly. You know, they're getting me pregnant. They're helping me carry a pregnancy to full term. I was so mad. I wanted everything to be perfect. I became honestly a control freak from the time I was taking my vitamins to all the things I wanted to do so that they would be perfect. Not human, but perfect. I wanted the numbers to be perfect. I wanted uh, numbers like horm hormone numbers, like they get tested and they can tell you numbers. And if there were two, two, two numbers off, I'll be making such a big deal out of it. I wanted perfection all over. Guess what? Life happens. Nothing is perfect. This is a human human experience. And I, for moments, will forget that this is a human experience and attempt to be God by wanting to control everything. I cannot tell you how much more harder I made my already difficult journey to motherhood by attempting for perfection. So for all of you listening here today, just pay attention to what is difficult for you right at this moment, whether that's socializing, your current relationships, your lack of relationships, your career, your goals, health and mental health goals, whatever feels heavy and difficult right now, ask yourself if what you're trying to attempt in there is perfectionism, is trying to strive for perfect in that area. Here's the thing. We cannot strive for perfect while holding a belief that who we are today is enough. Those two things don't go hand in hand. In other words, you cannot believe that you're enough and attempt to be perfect. Those two things cannot, like if you truly hold a belief that you, who you are is enough, that your life as is right now is enough and beautiful and whole, from that, whole, from that belief, there's no room or space for perfectionism because that, that is already, you're perfect. So let's, let's as a community strive for in perfection especially to the women listening to me we don't need any more women modeling embodying and acting like we're imperfect humans in our community we need to embrace imperfect that's what we do best we love so deeply we can carry so much we are so powerful within our communities, within our homes, within our friendships. So, so powerful that it doesn't take many of us to begin to be the change. The change that says, <laughs> excuse my language, but fuck all these attempts to become imperfect because we already are. Like Imperfect is the thing, is what we're striving for. Let's help raise a community where we understand our human condition and we embrace it, where we turn our mindset towards gratitude and abundance and not scarcity and limitations. Like not only will we thri thrive in our own personal, professional lives, we will give permission to other people to do the same. So let's hold, let's make the intention. That's where it all begins. We make the intention to hold the belief that we are enough. So repeat it with me. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. I want you to make that your mantra, not only for you, but my relationship is enough. My home is enough. My body is enough. My clothing is enough. My bank account is enough. Any growth comes from that belief. Anything else you're attempting to do, I'm not saying you won't get to growth by trying to be perfect, you still will, but you're not going to be happy. You're going to get to have it all or the thing that you want, and somehow you're going to get there and dismiss it because it's not good enough. That's the problem with the perfectionist mindset, that even when, when we get to a relationship of our life, of our dreams, when we get to the money in the bank that we wanted to have, we get there and we are unhappy we find our way back to unhappiness because we still hold the belief that we are not enough so we see life through the lenses of not being enough so the key here is not to be perfect is to embrace our imperfect human condition 
which 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 talks about possibilities, which teaches teaches us so much, which humble us when we're not trying to be perfect. We're we're now humble. We understand we're human, and so we will make mistakes. We will heal if we if we hurt. Let's do our best. Let's just put our grain of sand. We, we're just tiny little. We're adding our part. And we're adding our part by being kind to ourselves, by really showing up with an open heart to love ourselves in this human experience to the best of our ability, not attempting to perfect, attempting to be human. So I hope this speaks to you. I know we had great conversations throughout this chat I gave to the beach body people and I have to I have to tell you that I I feel my life has improved in so many ways more ways than I can think of or that I can tell you and describe because I've intentionally and purposely decided that perfectionism wasn't for me that giving my happiness to this idea of attempting to be perfect was not worth it. Not for me, not for my family. The mental capacity I have, the energy I've got within me, my self-esteem, my confidence, the love I feel for myself, uh, it's th that is priceless. So I'm speaking to you, the perfectionist mindset. You know how much you suffer. I don't need to tell you, you know that. So if that's the way you want to go about life, keep it up. But if you would love to be curious about how to open more space, to not feel that you have to be perfect, to embrace mistakes, to embrace your imperfect human condition and that of everybody around you, I welcome you to look, to look within your life to see in what areas you're applying is all or nothing, black or white, perfect, or else, I don't love you. And set the intention. Just your willingness, just your awareness can do so much for you. My clients ask me, okay, 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 great. Now what? What do we do about it? So many times we just want to jump into the doing. I just want you to be, to really let this concept sort of enter your mind and see what happens. It's like an ideology. You, you don't, you know, like if you were to start reading theory or reading about a religion, for example, and you decide that this is good for you, that, that you wanted to practice this, like what would be the steps other than understanding this better to really pay attention to how this can impact the different life, aspects of your life? That is sort of like what I want you to see this challenge that I'm leaving you with of making imperfect your new perfect. What would change in your life if you, if you were to embrace imperfect? If you were to change that in your mind, that imperfect means equals perfect. What would change? What would be different? Get curious, get curious. And if you want more about this, more information about this, uh, this is this is all I do, my friends. This is my favorite thing to do is coaching women through um, to a life of imperfections and joy and happiness. And I hear it from my clients on a regular basis. They think this is possible, and you're right. There is so much joy on the other side. So if you don't believe me, I get it. Put it to test. Go go get so curious that you practice this. And allow, allow this to become your story. It just become so curious that you want to apply this in your life and that you want to see what it's like on the other side. I mean, you've been trying for perfect for so long and you're still feeling the way you're feeling. So what is there to lose? You already know the way to perfectionism. So it's not like you're going to lose this for life if you attempt to embrace imperfection. That I'll leave you with. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that you join me in this idea of liberating our world 
from trying to not be human. And instead, really just opening up our hearts to kindness, compassion, and unconditional love to, to, to be given permission to be imperfect because we are, <laughs> because we already are. All right, I'll leave you with that. If you've got thoughts, questions, come say hi. I'm excited to hear from you. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next episode. Talk to you soon.